Despite being a relatively small portion of our overall body size, the feet are comprised of a remarkable number of complex structures. There are 26 bones, 33 joints, 19 muscles, and 107 ligaments, which are fibrous tissue that connects bones to other bones. One of these 107 ligaments is called the plantar fascia. Every year, 2 million Americans suffer from heel pain thanks to this little itty bitty bit of tissue. Plantar fasciitis is an inflammation, thickening, and tightness of the plantar fascia. The plantar fascia is a ligament on the bottom of the foot that runs from the heel up to the toes, forming the arch of the foot. When this ligament is tight, it can cause a lot of pain, it can pull against the heel bone, even causing a heel spur to develop. Patients often will experience pain when standing and walking for prolonged periods of time. However, patients also experience pain from plantar fasciitis after periods of rest. This occurs because patients who experience plantar fasciitis get a tightening of the ligament while at rest. Then when they stand on it, uh, patients will get a severe acute pain in the arch or heel regions. The first step to diagnosis is a clinical examination by a podiatrist, which may consist of taking a medical history, physical activity history, and examining the patient's feet when they walk and stand still. An x-ray may be performed to rule out a heel spur or a possible fracture in the bone. Ultrasound and MRI can actually visualize the ligament tissues. Those images will reveal if a plantar fascia is thickened, enlarged, or more inflamed than normal. There are several types of treatment modalities available to treat plantar fasciitis. They are both conservative as well as surgical. The conservative treatments for plantar fasciitis include injection therapy, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, stretching icing exercises, night braces, custom molded foot orthotics, and there are even more technologically advanced procedures that we have now, including Neurotherm, which uses a radio frequency to try and help with the symptoms of plantar fasciitis, as well as platelet injections to help heal the plantar fascia. If these conservative treatments fail to resolve the symptoms, then and only at that point do we consider surgical management for this condition. And surgery now can be performed through a very small incision that only requires one or two stitches. Plantar fasciitis is a very common condition, and fortunately, we're usually able to resolve these symptoms with very little downtime and very little loss of work time. Certain patients are predisposed to getting plantar fasciitis. These are patients who are flat-footed, have a tight Achilles tendon, or who have a high arch type foot. These patients can do a few things to prevent future inflammation. Certainly wearing appropriate shoes, wearing even custom molded foot orthotics can help prevent the occurrence of plantar fasciitis. Keeping your foot very flexible and limber, along with the Achilles tendon, can help prevent this from occurring. There are certain exercises that we can do to stretch the Achilles tendon. There are wall pushes and certain exercises that can be performed to elongate and stretch the Achilles tendon complex. Running, walking, or standing for long periods of time can also cause plantar fasciitis. So, athletes and people with very mobile occupations should be on the alert for foot pain. Wearing good, supportive footwear can go a long way. About three months or 400 miles after which, you should replace those worn out sneakers with new ones. And after a long day of being on your feet, patients should give in to that instinct and relax and put their feet up. They should also throw in icing the heel, doing a little bit of stretching and massaging the foot to help loosen that ligament. You know, I've been standing here for a long time. I think it's time for my foot massage. I'm Dr. Mike Rosen, and you're watching the eHealth Network. Stay healthy.